up until this point, my presidential campaign was about um, healthcare. Like we would, uh, we're gonna buy out five to 20 health, health insurance companies and I'm gonna have the government massively subsidize them and make a public option, but I'm gonna actually take all their employees and I'm gonna take the best of certain companies and uh, I'm gonna get rid of the worst of certain companies and we're gonna not be very sales oriented at all which I think is one of the issues here, right? Because you want to have more salespeople to help the economy when I can have them do something else. Like, what can they do? They can label data for AI. What does that mean? Okay, so um, when you train a computer to like look for something, um, you label data, and so you need humans to help it. And I'm all about AI, and I'm all about AI doctors. And I believe um, that AI doctors can work with nurses because um, you don't want to like, yes, you can leave an AI alone, but you can really have an AI work with someone that actually knows what they're doing. And nurses know a lot and training AI doctors helps regular doctors because an AI doctor is always going to have the most data because you're feeding. It's like basically it encourages doctors to create data to like organize how they do data. Like when you're a doctor and you're assessing a cancer patient, you go through a checklist and you constantly ask them, ask them the same questions and you try to get uniform answers because you're going to feed that data into the computer and you can always go back and say, well, on this date, he said this um, because you, you deal with a lot of people. Well, if you're uh, institutionalizing that and but you're not you're not I mean, granted, we. We're not going to discourage people from innovation, but like when you have like an institutionalized way of entering data, it's really good for science progress. But right now, oh no, we, we've got HIPAA rights. We got to stay secret. Well, you are staying, you are a secret. Um, we, we don't need to know who you are. We need to know your region. We need to know your behaviors. Um, but all, all I'm saying is um, we should consolidate data and we should partner with the Chinese because they have so many people and if they um, brought their data with our data and we um, trained um, d um, doctors to be able to spot things in like x-rays, I think that's a, a great way to pr make progress in the medical field. And we can, for example, say you um, need to get an MRI. You go, there's a nurse, you do the MRI, the AI doctor analyzes it and then uh, says, oh, well, I see this. And then the doctor goes, oh yeah, I see it too. Um, but that can bias the doctor. So we probably want the doctor to look at um, the, the, the imaging like without ever knowing what the AI doctor says. But w all I'm saying is what's wrong with two opinions and one of the opinions can be smarter than you. All right. so. Um, that leads me to what I talked about a lot is the government spends so much money on like software that's a secret. Like the NSA has all their software. And yeah, maybe they make some of it open source, but all I'm saying is uh, generally the government does stuff for the government, but why if the government is, is spending that much money, isn't the government giving software to people? So I'm all about open source software. I think open source software also prevents hacking. Um, if, if you have people that are smart enough to read um, certain software, but um, that is why I think we should do open source cybersecurity software um, that is like easier than some of this cybersecurity software out there right now. Because right now cybersecurity software is like, you gotta like stand on one foot and pat your head and like, like rub your nose or some crap, but don't pat your nose. And um, they might change that later um, that, that's kind of how <laughs> cybersecurity software is. It's, some of it's hard to work. And so um, I'm all about government cybersecurity software. And I think some people might butt heads with me on that. And you can convince me, if I get elected president, you can convince me that we shouldn't let everyone like actually beat hackers. But you're going to have to really convince me. All right. So um, my actual primary campaign ob objective to this point has been about saving the planet. And I've said, well, if I can't get con congressional approval to fight a war to take, a, take oil, or to specifically, we're gonna fight a war against people that hate gay people. So if you hate gay people, it's illegal to be gay, you're a hateful person, we're gonna just kill your country and take your oil. Um, so um, that's, that's really what it's about. But I have to get congressional approval, approval to do a war like that. I, I actually believe in, in checks and balances, and I think that Congress, Congress should give me, should like 
give me way beyond the funds that I need for this war, and that's why I do need congressional approval. But I've said that if I get elected twice for pre as president, um, then we will go to war the second time. And I'll, I'll be honest about it. And that's the difference between Donald Trump and me, and that's the difference between Joe Biden and me, is I will be straightforward with you, and I might be wrong, and someone will say you're wrong, and then I'll be like, oh crap, I'm wrong, because I will. Like, if there's anything I've learned throughout my life is, don't be afraid to change your opinion. But in Washington, D.C., it's a bad thing if you've ever changed your opinion. But my opinion is that if you don't change your opinion ever, then you're not much of a thinker. Like, if you're right your entire life, then how in the hell are you right about everything your entire life? That makes no sense. You better be wrong, because I'm wrong every year. I'm wrong every however many months. Like, the reality is I don't think I'm actually good at jail. And that's the thing. Like, in, in jail, I think you don't want anybody to notice you. Um, but no matter what, they're going to try to notice you because they're, they're they want to figure out who's a pedophile. All right, so my my real goal of my campaign so far is reduce oil consumption in half in less than four years, because I'm not going to do this war unless I get congressional approval. But I also understand that we have foreign spies in our in our Congress, like that's just how how it works. When you when you're like you don't even have to be born here. What I'll tell you is. Um, Spetsnaz is going to move to the United States and they're going to have kids and their kids are going to be American. And like they can, apparently Spetsnaz can get in our Congress and it's not that big of a deal. Spetsnaz is like Russian special forces. So it's not, a, I mean, a lot of those people I think can end up being like the GRU, which is like CIA. All right. So my campaign is big time about this water treatment facility um, that I want to build. I want to build a pipeline from Los Angeles area all the way across the desert in Death Valley to bring water in so we can desalinate massive amounts of water. Like I'm talking about moving a lot of water, like mega project moving water, which I feel like for a lot of people is like, uh, you want to move that much water? We got to talk about this. And that's what I'm going to say. I really think we can generate a lot of heat. And um, I think that we're going to, um, we need to make sure the Hoover Dam always operates. The Hoover Dam creates electricity for a lot of people. If the Hoover, if, if Lake Mead dries up, that's going to be really bad for the Hoover Dam. It's not just about the water because right now the farmers in California are using that water. I'm talking about water from Colorado River when they used to be able to use groundwater, but their groundwater is going down so low. And so that like we have more people taking from that water than ever. Los Angeles takes so much water from that or from, from, from that, from that river. And yeah, it's going to always be replenished, but how much? And the real concern is when we start talking about those crops over there in, in the Central Valley, which which is like a massive bread basket for the United States. And I understand Donald Trump like, we got enough water in Michigan for, for everyone. We can have water for everyone. Do you want to build a pipeline from Michigan? I mean, I guess theoretically, like I, I'm the type of person that you can convince me that that's what we need to do. Minnesota has that much snow. Um, but all I'm saying is I don't think that's like as feasible as building a pipeline from Los Angeles. And um, and I, I think that everyone benefits from that food, and, I, and we should all appreciate it. Which leads me to my next point: what, What's up with wine? Like, is it is is wine non it, it is wine unsustainable because of the water requirements? I don't know. All right. So I also wanted to create one of the best, or not one of them, the best online university of all time. And I am all about online education. I grew up in an online education home. My dad owns an online education f uh, company, partially. And I've been writing online education courses forever. I've taken a lot of online education courses. The reason I'm a good programmer isn't because of college. It's because I took online education courses. And it's also because I ask a lot of questions. I am annoying. I want to figure out everything. So um, I would love to partner with TikTok because the Chinese are obsessed with education and TikTok makes a lot of things more fun. And let's face it, Snapchat could do it too. Um, that, that's the thing about like, we don't have to use TikTok, but I feel like TikTok has gotten screwed over because Donald Trump doesn't like China. And when you elect Donald Trump, what are you saying to China? I hate you. Because what does Donald Trump say? I hate you, China. That's, that's like, he's been very clear. China is the enemy. And if you are constantly calling someone your enemy, what does that mean to them? Oh, oh, I'm your enemy? Thanks for letting me know that. And I don't think you understand that, like, the Chinese aren't little bitches. Like, the, the Chinese aren't like, 
oh, I'm weak because I don't spend as much money on the military as you. The Chinese know one thing is that they don't have to spend as much. People live off nothing in China. They, like, if a war breaks out, China sure would be great to have manufacturing on your side. They're, they're like the craziest manufacturers in the world. They're very trained in like welding and stuff. They build crazy skyscrapers. All I'm saying is they are good to have on your side, just like we're good to have on your side. But what I'm telling you is if you're constantly saying, I'm your enemy, I'm your enemy, I'm your enemy, then China is going to go, oh, wait, did you, I'm your enemy? Maybe I should just kill your people in Asia. And we have a lot of them. We have a lot of troops over there. We have troops in Guam. We have troops in the Philippines. We have troops in Japan. We have troops in South Korea. We have troops on this other island that I didn't even know we had troops on. We actually have troops in Djibouti, apparently. I'm like sitting here going, really? I guess everyone has troops in Djibouti. We've got troops everywhere, which uh, all I'm saying is um, other people can still fight in their region and do very, very well. If we fought a war in Asia, we would have a very difficult problem fighting China because China isn't a little bitch. And all I'm saying is if you constantly tell someone your enemy, how are you ever gonna start telling them that they're, you're not their enemy? Yeah, so um, I believe that like there's nothing wrong with Chinese people seeing our data because I believe the most important thing that America has going for it, that like, okay, America, Russia, America, Russia, which one's better? Well, all I have to do is go watch TV. Russia's not on TV. No one cares about Russians. They care about Americans. Everyone cares about Americans. People want to talk to me about freaking Britney Spears in Egypt and Shakira. Well, she's not American. She's from Colombia. But all I'm saying is, like, that's how it is. So, um, like, like, media is important and social media is like real Americans. This is what real Americans are like. And that, like, it's just like I can see what real Chinese people are like, and it bridges the divide. So this whole I'm against social media that's that's international is like, I I, I don't think it's like secret communications type social media. We're not we're not trying to encrypt our communication. This isn't like like we're gonna have encrypted conversations. TikTok is about like I'm making videos. I mean, I don't know, apparently Snapchat's about like, we're having private conversations. I don't really get Snap Snapchat. I think Snapchat wasn't fully thought out. I think they were all about the filters because they were very early in the game and so they had an, un it was unfair. And that's why it's like, well now you guys need to realize that like, you need to be more bent on like, using the filters to, to be a comedian, like I was doing back when I first used Snapchat. But, all right, so, um, that's what my campaign's been about, is not saying, you're my enemy, I want to fight you. I want to fight you because if someone's constantly telling me that they want to fight me, you know what happens? I'm going to fight them. And the Chinese have been telling their people that they're going to fight us. And so all I'm saying is like when you think that like your vote is completely irrelevant, like this whole situation where Joe Biden doesn't like the Chinese either. Trust me, I can't like the Chinese. I'll never get voted for. I can't like the Chinese. It's just like I like this. This is from China. This is probably from China. I don't know where this is from. Probably from freaking Germany. That's probably actually from China. Yeah. So anyways, all I'm saying is everything's from freaking China. And so, like, you can hate them all, all you want, but it's like, maybe you should be grateful for them. But no, no, they're our enemy. You're our enemy. That's what Donald Trump says. And I'm about not saying that. But now my, um, my, my, uh, my, my presidential campaign is about, like, stopping the cruel and unusual punishments. Because, like, y'all don't understand, like, it, like, I got a scar on my face. You think it's, there's, like, any, any coincidence in my entire life um, that, like that it exists, uh, that I have a scar on my face. Do you realize that I have to have a scar on my face? That's part of my life is having a scar on my face. So, like, you can think that you understand what it's like to go to jail, but the guy with a scar on his face, who's like a very serious martial artist, he doesn't want to be there because he doesn't want to have to get in the fighting situation. So what I'm saying is, like, um, I have compassion for people that are not as strong as me in jail because I was the best athlete always. Like I have very good hand-eye coordination. Like I'm not a regular person to fight. So um, I think that the person that's the worst athlete shouldn't feel scared.